So if you lie to people, guess what? They're gonna find out really fucking fast if they try your treatment or your service and they don't get any results. And then they're gonna fucking tell everybody and you just lost that patient. Welcome back to the Spinoso Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Alex Spinoso. My experience is in scaling all types of medical businesses and I'm sharing my journey with you guys. It's not a journey of you should do this. It's a journey of, hey, this is what I did and I hope it helps you as well. I want to help you build your business, take ownership of your life, and become a better leader at home and at work. So let's get into it, guys. And welcome, as always, Miss Amanda May. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> By the way, we never actually uh, followed up. Did you, can you talk about your CEO job over there at, uh, I know it was Public Beauty, but now you're on the board over there and yeah. running the whole program. And what, what, what was that, what's that about? I was, update on that. I don't think we've talked about that. Yeah, we haven't. Um, so I was asked to take a seat on the board for Ecomfolio, Ooh. which is uh, we have two hundred thirty-five million dollar roll up. Um, the first acquisition is happening now. Uh, it's set to close in like three days. Ooh. Yeah, so that'll be really good. So we've been deep in doing due diligence on the company and uh, meetings, advisor meetings and things. And so there's five five women on the advisory board and we all get together and, and, and dig into the company and see where we can bring our expertise to do better, mm -hmm. you know, cut, cut out costs, cut out the bloat and, and really scale these businesses from you know, 5 million EBITDA to, you know, 20, 30, 40. And so we're excited about it. But yeah. And then um, going public, we're supposed to go on that TV show later mm. this year. Oh, yeah. Yep. So there's a few of us ladies that love to be on TV and love to talk. So uh, I'll likely be one of the faces on that when when that happens. But yeah, it's That's been pretty awesome. cool. It's been pretty cool. That's really cool. So what? Uh, so you're doing the first acquisition, or there is obviously there's going to be more after that. Do they have a cadence of what they're trying to acquire at? Yeah. So six, uh, sixteen brands over six years. Okay. So the first, we'll get through this first acquisition, um, kind of make sure we have all the the players in place, and then those acquisitions will start to happen faster. We want to have six done in the next like six months. Oh wow! And then it will That's start, and they'll start to roll in faster. Oh wow! Um, after this first one mm -hmm. comes into play and then from there scaling. But I think, I think it's going to be interesting because we've, we've been looking at mo like a lot of different types of businesses within beauty, um, some brick and mortar. So a lot of direct to consumer, mainly mm. direct to consumer. Some of these brands do have a footprint in big box retail, but, uh, really honing in on that direct to consumer market. And then, um, really focusing on how we can take the ecosystem and use each business to help the other business. So one might be really strong in direct consumer where another one might be more big box retail and then seeing where that overlap makes sense so that we can own, take the owned media and scale it and, mm. and market to all these other businesses from within. So it just makes the marketing spend less we can scale faster yeah. and we have the teams in place to actually do it. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah. Let's get into it today, guys. So I want to share some good news and you can take it as bragging, but look, it's necessary because it's, I want to establish really the topic of this podcast episode. So uh, last year, our businesses did very well. We did eight figures. We did almost $20 million in Genesis and in our other uh, companies, I think we did around you know, 20 or 30 million. Uh, but this year, we should be on track to generate almost 200 million plus in annual revenue. Now, there's a lot of factors that went over into that. But for this episode, I thought we could actually kind of zero in on 20 minutes that make a huge difference in the successes of my business. So what I'm going to talk about is really the consult that happens before people purchase any type of service from Genesis or from any other company that we've had in general. So the consult is the conversation that we have with a customer about what they need and what our products or our services can actually do for them. So it doesn't matter if you're a medical entrepreneur uh, 
in our space or not, every business has their version of a quote unquote consultation. A com- it's a conversation where you offer your product or service to someone. They need it. It's essentially convincing them that your product or service is a solution for their problem. So I thought we'd talk about that and what's worked with Genesis and what will work for you too. That's such an important part because it's not that consultation isn't about selling something. And those talking points are really good for people to know because so many people who have a business think they have to just go sell, sell, sell. And it's it's definitely different than that um, when it comes to being effective in setting that foundation and building trust with the people that are coming to us for a solution. Exactly. And what you just said, that that trust part is the overarching, most important part of any type of sale. People only buy from you if they trust you. If they don't trust you, they'll never give you a single dollar. They have to trust that whatever you are selling is the solution to their problem. And they're not buying that solution, they're buying you. So they have to trust you. That is huge. And Along with that comes, with great power comes great responsibility. (laughs) Along with that comes not selling people shit that they don't need. Mm -hmm. So when they come in and they want something, you sell them what they truly need. It may not look exactly like what they were thinking in their mind, but you sell them what they need in order to get to their end result. They're going to tell you about the beach when they're trying to go on vacation. And what you need to do is not sell them all the airplane ride and shit like that. You need to make sure that your end result, whatever you do, your end result ends up at the beach with them. (laughs) So essentially, you wanna make sure you talk through everything that they need, everything that they want, all their Mm -hmm. concerns, all their questions, and make sure you really have a relationship with this person. Don't make it just transactional. Hey, you want this? Here you go. I'll give it to you, which is fine. You can do that at scale, but over time, you're going to lose people to turnover. They're not going to be loyal. If you just try and sell them shit, you might get them once, maybe twice, but they're not going to get them that third time. They're not going to come back because they're going to realize that your business is purely transactional. You don't care about them. And so when you bring them in, make sure that you're asking pertinent questions. Why are you here? What is your goal. Even over the phone, I just want price. Okay, we can both agree that you didn't just call on price. What's the problem that you're trying to solve? Because I don't even know if I can solve your problem. But if you tell me your problem, I can tell you whether or not we can solve it. And if Mm -hmm. we can't solve it, great, we can move forward at that point. Does that sound fair? And so making sure that patients know that you're there for them, asking them those questions, and then shutting up, listening, letting them talk to you, letting them go through their concerns and what they need so that you can guide them into this treatment versus that treatment, so on and so forth. So you want to make sure, again, creating relationships with these people, build that customer trust and prioritize listening to the customer throughout the entire consultation. Well, I feel like that's such an important part as to building the trust is them actually knowing that you're listening. So, you know, like, taking nuggets from what somebody says and, and that being a part of the conversation. So like if somebody's coming in for weight loss, they're looking for that beach body. Mm-hmm. You're talking to them about their vacation. It's not, ju- you know, they're excited cause they're going, they're going on this vacation. Well, like, you know, it's okay to ask some questions about why are you going on this vacation? Who are you going with? what bikini did you buy? What bikini do you want to buy? You know, like, you know, some things like that and making it more personal and more fun and, and really connecting with the, the individual on more than just the sale and the money aspect of it, because you can feel like we've all been in those cases where, you know, that person's getting commissioned. So you, you, you know, they're looking at you with dollars in their eyes. Like I'm getting paid on this. But when it's like, you're in an environment where somebody really cares about what I care about. Now I believe in what you're telling me and it does build a lot more trust that way. 100%. 
And then I think about, you know, that bikini I want to buy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's and exactly how I the might point. look in that bikini, exactly. not necessarily, you know, the, the health factor. If the reason I'm going is because I want to wear that really cute bikini, then that's the, exactly. that's the selling point. That's the point. Exactly. Um, and then, and then I think, uh, uh, th that's the consultation part. The follow up part, although that's not what we're going to get into so much on this one is also super important because after you have the, the, let's say the person moves forward with treatment and then they end up getting that bikini that they were talking about, just using that as an example, when they come back asking like, do you have any photos in it? You mm -hmm. know, bringing that up again, it's that follow up. So they know you really did care about it. And then the next sale is just natural because you've already built their trust in that, that they know you're listening. They know you actually care about who they are and what's important to them. Absolutely. Yeah. You've built their rapport and then you've established the relationship. And again, you've listened to them and followed up on what they told you. Hey, how was your trip? How was the bikini? Show me pictures. All those things. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Who do you feel like are the most um, essential components to that type of conversation? I think with any type of conversation, any type of consultation, number one is you just got to be pretty honest. I mean, they come to you for your expertise. Now, I don't call up a business and tell them what to do. I tell them what I want, and then they provide solutions based off what I want. And that's the same thing that we're doing in a consultation. They tell us what we want, and then we're going to provide solutions and honest solutions that are going to get them results. So if you lie to people, guess what? They're going to find out really fucking fast if they try your treatment or your uh, service and they don't get any results. And then they're going to fucking tell everybody and you just lost that patient. So never lie to people. Always clearly present what's required of them as well as of us. Because you can't just, especially in our world of weight loss, can't just give somebody a medication and say, well, you don't need to exercise or work out or do anything. You can eat whatever you want and you'll lose weight. That's a misnomer. It's an absolute lie. And a mm -hmm. lot of people mark it that way and it doesn't make sense. And again, you end up having trouble. You end up getting into trouble. You end up with patients that are pissed off. Don't exaggerate the results. Give them realistic goals. When it's weight loss, we say, hey, Really between four to eight pounds a month is the most weight you want to lose. Faster than that, you're destroying your metabolism. You want to go nice and slow. And if they make that four to eight, we don't increase their meds. And we tell them, this is where you're supposed to be at. This is great. You're doing a great job. Make sure they're encouraged about it. And then show them the benefits that they're getting every single time that they check in with you. Like you said, the follow-up, mm -hmm. making sure they're coming back seeing how they're doing, asking for their opinions on your treatments and their responses and everything like that. And then the second part is actually fucking caring. So having empathy for their situation that they're going to through. So try and step into their shoes. Understand where they're coming from. Understand what is going to get them out of bed and get them on a run or at the gym or taking this medication and making different food choices if they're trying to lose weight. And then validate those you know, a, actual emotions that they have. It's okay to have that emotion. It's okay to feel that way. Lots of people that come in feel that way. Lots of people think that way. That's okay. And making sure that you're getting all their concerns out with that. Another great part of that empathy is asking what they've tried before and not what they've tried before, but what they didn't like about other programs they might have tried before, what they did like about the other programs they've tried before. So you can replicate those things that they did like mm -hmm. and make sure that you either solve or eliminate or say, hey, we don't do that here for all the things that they didn't like. That way you're going to gain, again, your rapport, their trust, going to be honest about it, etc. The third, third thing is making sure that they you empower them to make a decision. So a lot of times people will come and humans in general are very indecisive. And there's the joke with females, literally, where do you want to go eat? They'll fucking never tell you. But if you ask, hey, I booked a surprise dinner. Where do you think we're going? And she guesses, her first guess, you just say, yup. 
how'd you guess it? And then you go book. <laughs> That's true. That's terrific. Yeah. So I've not heard that. I, I stole terrific. it from someone somewhere. But that being said, you, the same is for people who come into your office. They are going to have difficulty making decisions. Mm-hmm. And I see it the mm-hmm. same when I go and speak at BTL Aesthetics events. And they have trouble sometimes buying a, a multi hundred thousand dollar, two hundred thousand dollar machine. It's like, will it will it make money? How do I do this? It's very indecisive. And you have to help walk them through that decision that it is a good decision and that they're not going to be judged for their decision because the, those are the two concerns that really any human has when they make a decision. Number one, it's always to benefit them. They always, Nobody makes a decision just so that it's going to hurt them or hurt people around them for the most part. Even if those people, even let's just take even psychopath murderers. If they make a decision to hurt other people, it's because it makes them feel good or powerful or some weird fucked up thing in their head. Every human wants to make a decision based off wanting to be happier. They, period. They don't make decisions wanting to be sadder that this decision is definitely going to be fucked up. So I totally want to do it. They don't. And it's the same with your patients. They want to know that their decision was the right decision and they want it to be reinforced by other people around them, and they want to know that it's going to push them in the direction or point them in the direction that they need to go in. So you don't need to pressure them or bully them or anything like that. You just tell, state the facts. Tell the truth. Yeah, we've had tens of thousands of patients lose weight on this medication. You can see their photos up on the walls mm-hmm. anywhere. There's proof of concept there. You're not lying. You know it's going to work for them. You know it's going to help them. So anything you're selling, if you know and believe that it's going to work and help for them, then you just tell them all the facts. And it's their choice whether they take you up on it or not. It's not a big deal if they don't. Because if you have a high-quality product out there and you're delivering ridiculously high customer service, you're going to get people buying from you. You're going to get people talking about your brand. And you're going to get people responding. There will be some sort of positive response to your company. And then the fourth thing is really res- like responsive list and nis- listening. Making sure, yes, you got two ears and one mouth. So shut the fuck up. Let Ask a question. Let them talk. Find out their whys. Ask a few more questions. But make sure they're talking the most so that you can really listen to them and figure out what they are trying to get at. And then you can decide whether or not you have a solution for them that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And if all the things, the honesty, the empathy, and the autonomy are there before that, and you have something that makes sense, then tell them, yeah, absolutely. I get where you're going. I, you know, I get what you're trying to do. This is the solution for you, period. I've seen it dozens, hundreds, thousands of times. It will work for you if you do this, this, and this, the clarity part. And you have no doubt. So you have no hard feelings whether they take you up on it or not. Because mm-hmm. if they don't, they might still have that problem in the future and then they'll come back. So making sure you're really being actively listening, understanding, clarifying any issues they have in between that. Yeah, it reminds me of consultation I had when I went to get my mommy makeover. Okay. I went to three different plastic surgeons and the one that I ended up going with He was very upfront with me. He said, I am one third of this process. And I'm thinking I'm paying you like 25 G's. Like you should be the whole process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Two thirds, (laughs) at least. Come on, you know. But and, And so that was an interesting thing. I was like, okay, that caught my attention. And he said, you have to wear the garments. That you have to do the aftercare properly yeah. and you have to eat right and, and exercise after the surgery. Like you can't just eat whatever and, and, and do whatever and think that these results are going to last. Like the, the end goal of what you're looking for is two thirds on you. Mm. Um, and I was like, wow, you know, but it, it put responsibility back on me. I ended up, you know, doing everything the way that I needed to do it because I was investing. So I'm like, okay, well, now I need to do my part so that I get the results that I'm looking for. But that level of honesty and transparency, it wasn't just like a magic wand, like, okay, I'm I'm a doc, so here you go. You got a new body. But it was like you have some you have some things that have to get done here. And he was the only doctor that said it, and he's the doctor that I ended up going with. So it was it was an interesting um, 
an interesting part of it that I could, you know, take that responsibility on. And I think that autonomy part, you know, that gave me the autonomy to decide, am I going to take this seriously? Am I going to do my part? And then, you know, that's how I'm going to get the results that I want. Yeah. I mean, that's huge. It's huge. And it sounds like, I mean, you got a great result and everything like that. Well, at least you look great. Hey, thanks. And then I decided to have another baby. Yeah. And fucked it all up. <laughs> that was the one thing that Steph and I had a conversation about. She's like, I think, I think we'll get the mommy makeover now and, you know, we'll freeze some eggs. And if we decide to have kids again, maybe we'll get a surrogate so I don't destroy my body. Cause uh-huh. I was like the number one thing. Cause she didn't want to get the mommy makeover after the triplets. Cause we still had the last embryo and everything like that. But yeah, we had to fuck that up. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, um, <laughs> I do think that my ability to get back mm-hmm. quickly after the baby had to do with the fact that I had already had, surgery yeah so like it did i just i i I do feel like some of that muscle memory and i mean i had been working out a lot and taking care of myself anyway before the pregnancy and during so that obviously was helpful too but i i kind of feel like it helped me get back on track faster yeah at least that's what i tell myself i have the same thing with my ability to get fat it just naturally comes back whenever i i need it to so if i want to eat Chicken nuggets, cool. I could get fat real quick. Yeah. It's really my metabolism is perfect. It's primed for it. I think it's ready at all times really to get fat. Yeah. So, yeah. So you're I, like a fat kid on the inside. I am. I'm, I have a fat kid that I ate that is eating its way out <laughs> of me at all times. Yeah, exactly. Got it. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. You might not have been my doctor's first choice for surgery then. He might have been like, ah, you're not a good patient for me. Yeah. But, you know, that's an interesting thing, too, because if you really do listen to what people have to say, been in con- I've been in consultations with patients, you know, and, and they want to know how they get rid of visceral fat. And I ask, well, what are you eating? Well, Cheerios for breakfast every day. I yeah. mean, there's some things that you go, well, you know, you can really educate them like that would be something you'd have to change you know and uh sometimes they're just like i don't want to yeah i mean patients sometimes just don't want to make those changes but at least then they're they have the autonomy to make that decision themselves and to know like yeah this doesn't fit because i'm not going to be committed to it And, and exactly and you have the autonomy at that point to say you know what this probably isn't the best treatment for you because I'm not going to have you spend all this money and then you're going to get mad at me when you don't get those results so you could push away those patients, specifically having all those questions in line. And then you're really making sure that as part of that, whatever you're offering is, is going to fit into their success. So if they come and they say shit like that, I don't want to change my diet. I don't want to exercise at all. I just want to take this medication. I want to drop all this weight or I just want you, I just, you know, I'm not going to wear the fajas afterwards. That's what we call them in the Hispanic world. So the binders, abdominal binders and everything for mommy makeovers. I'm not going to wear those afterwards. I'm not going to eat right afterwards. That's fine. But then I'm not going to treat you Mm -hmm. because what I offer my service, I put my stamp on. And if, I do this and you don't do your part, you don't do your two thirds of this three part process, then still my name goes on that because guess what? You are going to blast out about me. You're not going to blast out like, hey, Dr. So-and-so was great. I mean, I love Dr. Spinoso, but you know what? I was a fat ass and I ate whatever I wanted and I didn't wear my abdominal binder or I fucking, you know, took my semaglutide every week, but then I ate donuts and candy every single day and I gained 20 pounds, you know, fuck that doctor. You're not going to say he's great and then I fucked up. No, everybody's going to say I paid for this medication and it didn't work. It didn't work. work. Yeah. yeah. Well, guess how many people it doesn't work in? Almost none if you're doing diet and exercise at the same time. So have some fucking accountability for your own actions. Yeah. Going into that, but that's part of that conversation is making sure that what you're, what you are offering them is going to tie into their happiness, but at the same time that their happiness also comes from within them. It's like that little meme with the little guy holding the jar of happiness and the other person's like, where'd you find that? And he's like, I made it myself, you know, 
sort of thing. And everybody's like, oh, that's so cute. But that is cute. I haven't seen that. Oh, meme. I'll have to send it to you. But yeah. it's really true. You know, you have to make sure that you are doing the work or your patients are going to do the work or your clients are going to do the work on them. Maybe you're a you know, garage door salesman and they have to do certain amount of maintenance and oil and shit on the garage door or else it's going to you know, creak or you know, mm-hmm. break apart mm-hmm. or have issues coming off the track or have issues with the springs and the belts lifting it up or down or things like that. Every part of our lives needs some sort of maintenance or things. And that's on us. That's on the owners. That's on ourselves, especially with our mm-hmm. own bodies to maintain and to do that part and not consistently blame others for our misfortunes or our issues. Yeah. And in the skincare world, that's a, an element too, because it's like you can go and do all these things for your skin these modalities and machines like the Morpheus 8. But then if you're not protecting your skin from the sun, a lot of that hyperpigmentation can come back. You see the premature aging, like, you know, and then you pair that with great skincare at home. Now you've got a full treatment. But if people are, let's say, coming in for like a a miracle treatment, but then they're going home and they're doing things that actually make it worse or continue to uh, add to the problem. It's like, they're not going to get the results that, that they want. And so, you know, setting, I think it's like creating a win-win, like, you know, we have something that can be helpful and that's great from a business standpoint, but it's also great for you because we're solving a problem and giving you the happiness that you're looking for. Yep. 100%. Yeah. It goes across the board. Exactly. Have you discovered an effective um, order or framework to have the conversation? Well, I didn't discover shit, but (laughs) I tell you what we stole it from. Like, so the closer method is kind of what we teach our staff how to go through. And uh, I've stole it from multiple people that use it in their businesses. So you could attribute it to whoever you want. I don't give a shit. But um, the closer method starts with, and it's spelled closer, C-L-O-S-E-R. And so the first part is clarify. So clarify what type of question they're asking for or clarify what they're looking for. So, for example, if we have a patient who has weight loss, you know, what is your issue? You want to lose weight. Okay, specifically how much weight you want to lose. Is there a reason why you want to lose weight? Okay, you, you want to fit into jeans for the summer or you want to look good for the wedding. Whatever you do, clarify exactly what their problem is. L is label them with that problem or label them with a problem that you can solve. So this is uh, Susie's fit in her jeans for the summer uh, weight workout plan or weight, weight loss plan or, you know, uh, Max's get fit for his wedding plan. Label them because that's a... Label, you want to label them so they know that, okay, this is my problem and this is the plan that's going to solve that problem. Mm-hmm. O is really overview. So overview of all the things that they've tried before, especially talking about the things that they liked about their last programs and they didn't like about those last programs. So you can really harp on all of their objections or all of the things they hated about their last programs with your program and why that isn't going to occur with you or those situations are not going to happen with your business. So you really want to talk about all the pain points, all the things they hate about or hated about their last programs or things that they've tried in the past and everything like that, because you want to make sure that your program doesn't involve any of those things. And if it does, you tailor it to that patient. So it doesn't, you know, so that doesn't trigger them. The same thing, with the positive, you want to overview the positive things that they like. So you continue to do those positive things throughout mm-hmm. your program. Uh, S is sell the vacation, not the plane ride. So you want to sell, you imagine yourself, you know, wearing your jeans during the summer, you're going to look super sexy, you're going to have amazing curves, you're going to go out at night and people are going to be staring at you. And they're going to love what you look like, or, you know, you're going to walk into that room when you're getting married and people are going to be like, wow, he looks completely different. He's really taking care of himself. You know, she married up sort of things. And you want to sell that vision, sell what it looks like for them, because that's what's going to get them through the discouragement of weight loss or the discouragement of what they're trying to get through or get to. 
So making sure that you're painting that picture constantly in their mind because you'll go back to that. And then really at that point, you can ask for the first close, ask for the sale. If they don't say yes, then you're going to go through excuses. You're going to go through why they don't want to, what their concerns for. Back to, hey, you know, you said that you had this problem. This is a solution to this problem. They're going to go through a bunch of different excuses, internal excuses of why they can't do it themselves. It's going to be mental, physical, their home life or whatever. External excuses. Oh, I can't do this because of my kids, because of my husband, because of X, Y, Z. And then the third thing is just making sure, again, we've talked about this before, that their decision was a good decision and that nobody's going to mm -hmm. judge them for it. So making sure that you're going through those things and checking off those boxes and those excuses. And then moving forward to the last part, which is after the sale, you reinforce their decision that it was a good decision. Celebrate them. I'm so excited for you to, ha to be on board. You know, follow up with them. Hey, how is your weight loss going? Make sure that they're getting back into the clinic, that you're visiting with them, talking to them. You know, can you imagine you looking great in those jeans? I can't wait to see you in those jeans. I can't wait to see your wedding photos. I'm so excited for your wedding. Are you excited for your wedding? Checking in with them consistently so you're pushing that. And that's the closer method. And we teach all of our staff to do that in the sales. We teach them to do that on the phone because they could do that on the phone and mm -hmm. sell on the phone, or they could stop at S and just say, you know what? I do have a solution to your problem based off everything you told me. Let's get you in for a consultation so that the provider can go through everything with you or the sales team can go over everything with you. And then once you're in there, you start over with the same closer method from C again. And you just go through line by line everything that the person on the phone went through. And so when you're doing that, you're consistently solving their vacation. And at the same time, every time they come back, you're doing the closer method again. Mm. Hey, you know, maybe they're very close to their goal weight and they're like, well, I want to try something new or I want to try something else. Or maybe they stalled out and they need to switch over to a different medication um, and you have other things that can improve them. Once you start to gain that trust, once you start to sell the, sell the vacation, they're going towards it, they see results, they start to improve their life, they're you know feeling better and looking better, then that's when you can start to what's called cross-sell or upsell. Get them into different products. Get them into things that they're going to keep coming back month after month after month after month for. Because everything we do, especially in the medical field, it's not a cure. Everything we do in business, it's not a one-time solution for the most part. It's going to continuously need maintenance. It's going to continuously need somebody checking on these things for us and improving. And if it's our own health, then it's going to, it's going to lie on us to consistently check on ourselves. Or again, a medical clinic checking on you and making mm -hmm. sure, hey, you taking care of this? Hey, I, I, I know you need a refill of your testosterone. Let's get you refilled. Hey, with testosterone, you should be taking this vitamin or this vitamin or this supplement and this supplement. Um, and so making sure that you're consistently talking about your other services and how they match with the service that the patient is already using or use or client is already utilizing is going to be very important. So we're going to talk about in a whole another episode how to like build out your product and your surface offers offerings and how to vertically integrate it. But that's just that's a, a touch on that. Yeah. And it I I think of that as like you're not really selling them anything because they're asking for it. Like they're asking for a solution to this problem. And then when you come in and you, you know, give ideas or other product in, insights or upsell, if you will, then it's like, I'm just adding value to what they've already asked me that they wanted. So I think about that for myself. I don't like the feeling of being sold something. I don't think most people do. Uh, but when somebody really sees a hole and they're like, hey, you know, this works really well with that. I'm like, I'll buy all day long. Yes, because I want my I want my results to be even better. And I want what I've committed to to happen faster or create more happiness or all those things. So it's almost like doing them a disservice if you're not offering that stuff because you have something else that, you know, could be great for them. And then by not saying, hey, this will also help your process. It's like who's that help? You know, that's a disservice to the person that's in front of you 
expecting you to be the one that is guiding them on this journey, whatever journey it is in any type of business. So it's like your responsibility to actually share those things. And when done with what we were talking about before, the, the integrity and the, the mm -hmm. autonomy and, and all of the, um, the empathy, it's like when it's done in that way, you know, then it's a really good thing to do. It's, it's a responsibility that you have. Yeah. You're 100% right. You're 100% right. They are coming to you as the expert. So don't be afraid to tell them everything that you can do to solve their problem. Because if you don't tell them everything that you can do to solve their problem and you only solve part of their problem with mm -hmm. what you tell them, they're going to go somewhere else to plug the holes in their boat in terms of what else can help solve my problem better mm -hmm. or what else can I use to help solve my problem. They're looking for those things. So if you have a bunch of different modalities that work together to solve a single problem, then put them together and solve that problem for the patient. Yeah. Yeah. What do you, um, it, you know, in general, how do those, how do those follow-ups look in the practices? So with our packages, we make sure that we have at least weekly follow-ups or at least monthly follow-ups, I should say, for every single patient. And that could just be a simple on the phone follow-up, say they don't have an appointment. And we try and drive this into our staff and it's hard because they have so much to do, but we try and tell them the best clinics call every single patient that they have in their books, no matter where they are, every single patient, and they say, hey, how you doing? Even if they don't have a consult booked or a follow-up booked, they just call the check-in with them. Because mm -hmm. when is the last time you had a medical provider call you to just check in on you monthly? Right. Almost none. The best clinics do that. The best clinics are calling every single patient day in, day out, every single month and saying, hey, how you doing this month? How you feeling? How, you know, anything we can do for you? No? Okay, good. You have a great one. We're here for you when you need us. Or if they are in a program, can't wait to see you next week. Can't wait to see you next month. Do you need a refill on your medications? Having that consistent connection, make sure that nobody falls through the cracks mm -hmm. ever. That is the best way to do it. The other way is we have patients coming in, getting some of their injections, getting some of their follow-ups. We make sure that they come in as much as they possibly can. So once a week to get their injections, weigh-ins for their weight loss, uh, to talk about their Botox or fillers or things like that so that we can see how they're feeling. We can see how they're doing, how their medication or their fillers are settling, things like that. And the more touches that we can give that person the more money that we're going to make because that person is going to start to trust us more and more and more. And there was a study done by Allergan, which is a big medical company. And they found out that after three visits, that's when a patient really trusted a provider to open up their wallet and buy more like fillers and spend more than, I think it was a $2,000 a visit, mm. but it was three visits. So in the Botox world, that means three visits at probably 30 minutes each visit. So it's only 90 minutes, but that's three months in between each of those visits. So it's like nine months or an hour and a half worth of time. That's how much time they needed to feel more confident mm -hmm. in trusting this person, trusting that they had the skills and everything. And we try and compress that by having them visit every week or visit people as much as possible so that we can get that hour and a half worth of time as fast as possible. But at the same time, I think our staff forgets that it still is going to take time to trust anyone. And as soon as you break that trust, then it's fucking over. Like you can have a marriage for 10 years, but as soon as you cheat, it's fucking over. Mm -hmm. It break all that trust for 10 years that you had in a, in one fell swoop. And it's the same with dieting, you can diet for an entire year and look really good. And then if you go on a binge for like two weeks and just eat whatever the fuck you want, you're going to gain like 10, 15 pounds. You can in two weeks. So it's a, it's a very, very double edged sword when you want to make sure that you are following up with your patients, make sure that you're delivering the highest uh, level of service and quality of service and so that you're building that relationship. But also mm -hmm. remember that time is something that again, in business you cannot speed up. It takes time for any company to grow. It takes time for any company to establish a good 
rapport and a good, really, brand across a nation, if that's what you're trying to do, across a state mm-hmm. or even across a city. It's going to take time, and you really can't speed that up. The fastest way to do it is to take care of people as much as possible, and that comes with the follow-up and long-term relationships with these people and coming back. It's playing the long game. Is there anything else that you want to say when it comes to approaching the consult and the importance of the consult in this 20 minutes to 200 million? So what would you say that I missed on the approach of the mechanics of the consult or anything like that? What would you say? Yeah, I think that it's about the full picture and getting people into the clinic. I think, uh, you know, having that ownership mentality, like our clinic directors and the people that work within your business, having that ownership mentality, they're out at the grocery store and they're inviting people into the clinic, like, you know, carrying yourself in a way that you can be out in the world, but also bringing business in. Um, and, and leads are coming in all the time too, but the personal relationship sometimes starts in other areas. You're, you know, if in your yoga classes or your workout classes or at the grocery store, like being able to talk about your business and getting people in having that ownership mentality, but then also paying attention to every aspect of their, their, uh, time in your clinic. So from the time they walk in the door, how does it look? Is it clean? Is, is it organized? Does it smell good? You know, touching those five senses. Did you give them something to drink? Um, you know, have you, have, have you smiled at them? You know, all of the things that come with walking into the door, greeting, um, making sure they're checked in quickly, making sure they don't have to wait very long, not just when they get back for the consult, but all of the things that happen before the consult, because that colors their perception before they even sit down with a salesperson to discuss the solution they're looking for. They're, they're creating these ideas. It's almost like when you meet somebody, I think the psychology says what, like you make 30 judgments in three seconds or something like that. I I don't have that exact, but it's some big amount of judgments in a very small amount of time. So these people are making a lot of judgments on whether or not this is a reputable business, somebody that they can trust, you know, a a place that they feel good in, a place that they feel invited into and comfortable in, you know, like professional or or, or is your staff dressed professionally? All of those things matter in building the trust before they even get to the consultation portion of their time in your clinic. So I think all of those things need to get taken into account as well. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. I've got nothing to say on top of that. That's perfect. Guys, you have to realize that you are representing your brand no matter where you are outside. And how you carry yourself, what you wear, how you look, everything, you're still representing your brand. Uh, That's why I wear my branded shirts everywhere I am because that's my brand. I want people to know about my brand as much as humanly possible and making sure that you, again, are listening to people, taking care of them, having empathy towards what they are going through and coming up with a solution to their problem and telling them whether or not you can actually solve their problem. And if you can't, not a big deal. Send them to someone who can and you will have way more business because they're going to refer people to you who have the problem that you can solve. So guys, if this helped you, go ahead and give it a like, subscribe, share it with somebody who you think it would help as well. Go to my website, dralexpinoso.com forward slash courses. If you have anything else that you want to learn about in terms of business and growth, I have got tons, hundreds of videos on there for free on how to build your business. And as always, keep listening, keep learning, keep growing. You're Superman.